Magma was added in Crypto 1.5 in 2009, so it has been a couple of years already. And it, it is probably one of the most powerful elements of Crypto, but also one that is relatively difficult to learn. This is why this webinar will concentrate on the fundamental features. I'm going to talk about things that probably everybody knows, but it's uh, good to go through all the elements and explain why they're there and how they work. And I'll be covering Magma 2.0, which is a um, re-implementation of Magma that we added in Crypto 2. Crypto Magma can be accessed uh, as a new Magma modifier in version 2.0, but we also have the old Crypto Channels modifier, which is uh, taken exactly as it was in version 1.6 and put there for backwards compatibility. Uh, we have the channel overrides, which technically also use in a Magma modifier, but on top of a special uh, holder object, and those apply to the last stage of rendering and not to the object space of uh, modifier stacks of PAT objects. And we have custom render elements which use exactly the same um, operators in order to produce data in an image form um, if a render element provided by Corrector doesn't cover the type of data that you want to output. Magma is currently available also in Genome MX, which is the mesh uh, modifier uh, plugin and will be potentially available in other upcoming uh, Thinkbox software products. Keep uh, an eye at SIGGRAPH, Tower Booth, and you might see something else that uses Magma. The um, adding of the Magma modifier is the first thing that I'm going to talk about. Um, and once again, I want to point out that there are multiple ways to do it, and most people are probably using the slowest one. So let's go and switch to 3ds Max and take a look. In fact, I'm going to uh, reset this scene first and start up really from scratch. I'll create a teapot. I'll make it a PRT volume, and I'm going to add the Magma modifier the slowest way possible. And this would be you go to the modifier panel, and then you click on the modifier list, and then you look for the, somewhere here there is the Magma modifier, and I select it, and then I can open my editor and do things to it. As you see, uh, this is a lot of clicks, and there is a faster way, which by default, when you install Cricutor, you get the Cricutor menu, and this Cricutor menu has a bunch of options, including the Add Cricutor Channels modifier. It still says KCM, and we basically just replace the code to apply the new style, Magma 2 modifier to the stack. Um, and this is much faster, but still not the fastest approach. The fastest approach would be if you have customized your toolbar, as instructed in the previous webinar, and you click the KCM icon, you get your Magma. So I would really suggest that you uh, customize your toolbar and have a KCM icon, and whenever you need another Magma, you can say one, two, three, I have now three Magma modifiers with single clicks for each, and that's much faster than any of the other approaches. The old KCM modifier, as mentioned, is still there for compatibility. In fact, the only way to add it is through the modifier panel, and you're going to see the Crypto Channels uh, modifier. If you select it, you're going to get a big note, which wasn't there in version 1.6, that tells you that this is obsolete, and it's just kept there for the cases where you need it. And it works exactly as it used to work in the previous work, um, versions of Crypto. Uh, and the main reason you might want to use it is to pass scenes to somebody that has uh, version 1.6. Uh, if you have a coworker or a friend that hasn't updated to version 2 and you want to pass a scene to him where you create a magma flow that he is supposed to use, uh, you can add one of those modifiers and create the flow and if you save the scene and pass it to him, he's going to get it and it will work. But if you open your scene that same scene in Magma 2, that, that means in Krikator 2 with Magma 2, uh, that modifier is going to be automatically converted to uh, a, the new Magma 2 modifier. 
Um, you can disable this behavior temporarily in the crypto preferences, but typically we want to load old scenes and convert them on the fly to the new format, and we want you to use Magma 2 in general. The reason for that is listed here. Uh, the new uh, version has a lot of benefits, and some of those are multiple editors can be opened at the same time, one for each modifier. In the past, you had a single editor and it was switching content depending on which modifier was selected. So now you can see your flow side by side on a second monitor or whatever you want to do. You can have multiple output nodes in a modifier. That means you can calculate something once and then output the result to multiple channels. Let's say you want uh, a value calculated based on, let's say, velocity to go to color, to emission, and to viewport color with different values or similar values. You can calculate uh, once and then output to three or more channels at once. In the past, with the 1.6 version of Crypto, you had to add multiple uh, modifiers and calculate again and again the same thing. The input sockets of nodes uh, have changed. You can now have multiple output sockets. Actually, the inputs and output sockets have changed. Um, the output sockets um, in version 1.6, you had only one per node, and now you can have multiple. And the input sockets can have now uh, default values and custom types for those default values. I'm going to show more about it a little bit later. The file format has uh, been actually introduced because in the past uh, the modifiers were saving in a sort of uh, uh, Mac script based but not really human readable format. It was a big array that was dumped to disk and now a Mac script based shareable format has been introduced. You can copy and paste and you can save and uh, upload the content uh, to, let's say, a website and anybody that copies that text can paste it then into a uh, Magma editor and it appears as the flow that it was supposed to be. So it's much easier to read and you can actually use it as a starting point to script Magma. You can have individual fl um, floating curve control editors which weren't available in the old version. The control was very small and in the command panel of Magma. And you have uh, a lot more exposable control types. There are a lot of other things that are new in Magma 2, but this is what is on the surface and what you're going to see in version 2, and it's really uh, a big improvement over the previous version. A few implementation details before we go into the actual practical stuff. Um, the flow now lives in the modifier and is accessible through a MaxScript interface, so it's very easy to add nodes, remove nodes, and so on through MaxScript. That wasn't very easy in the old version. The new Magma flow reflects, the editor itself reflects what is happening inside uh, an object called the Magma holder, and uh, any changes that you make to the Magma holder are reflected for example, if you script something uh, through the console, through the Mac script listener, all the changes would appear automatically in the editor without you doing anything with the editor itself. And um, all the nodes that you see in Magma are currently written in C++. So um, in the new version true, they report to the editor all the properties and all the types and sockets and names and so on. Uh, and that means that if the developer of Crypto adds a new node or a bunch of new nodes, uh, the editor doesn't have to be changed in order to reflect them. They automatically appear. So it's much easier time for me to develop uh, Magma now uh, because in the past I actually had to go and make uh, changes to the editor just to expose a new node. Now let's go to the actual editor and take a look at its um, user interface quickly to figure out what's there. I'm going to open the uh, test scene that I'm normally using for the introduction. And you're going to see here that we have the Magma modifier with uh, a flow in it. The flow itself is represented in a helium control. And inside this uh, area, we also have the depot, which can be turned on and off there is an info line underneath. We have the title bar, which tells you which version of Magma you're using. Is it Krakatoa or is it Genome? We have pretty much uh, the same layout. And uh, 
all the controls uh, the same, and the only difference between the two is the one says Krektoa magma flow and the other one says genome magma flow. Keep in mind that what I'm showing today is actually based on the latest uh, beta version of Krektoa, which is internally 2.1.2. Uh, you might um, have seen the 2.11. It's very similar, but it has a couple of bugs, and uh, my version is one step ahead, but it might still have some bugs. We'll release it soon and you'll play with it. And it has all the changes that we made to genome, including the new indicators at the bottom left corner, which tell you, are you in the current modifier or not? For example, if I go down here to the teapot, you get a yellow light that says, I'm not in the current modifier right now. And the green lamps tells you there are no errors. If I go here and select this object, now this one turns green because that's the current modifier. If I go down to the VAT uh, volume object, it's not the current modifier anymore. So this way you can know, are you working on uh, the selection in the modifier stack? If you see the uh, green lamp, you know you're there. And if I go here and change this default type to integer, I mean, not the default type, but the input value, uh, now uh, normal multiplied by an integer is not supported. And now we have a, an error. And this error is being shown at the bottom in the error reports field. And we get a red lamp that tells us something is wrong. We have the undo and redo buttons uh, next to the error controls you can left click or use uh, the typical uh, control Z uh, to undo and uh, you can right click and see a list of steps so uh, it's possible to jump over multiple steps and revert to a previous state. We have the auto and the update buttons which we'll be uh, talking about a little, a little bit more uh, in a minute. Um, they control the updating of the modifier and we have the command panel underneath where we have some rollouts that are always there, like the display options. We have the preset flow explorer, which is only available when no node is selected. When I select a node, the display options remain, but new rollouts appear. And some of those are dynamic. For example, the properties and actions rollout is being rebuilt on the fly uh, for each operator. And some operators, for example, if I disconnect here, the multiplier has its own default value, and this default value populates automatically the rollout whenever it's needed. So now it has controls, and if I connect back this node, the controls disappear. And the last thing, at the bottom we have the navigator, which is new in version 2, and that shows you where your nodes are. So if I pull a node back here, you're going to see uh, that left clicking is navigating there and uh, right clicking gives me a menu with uh, some pan and zoom controls. Apropos pan and zoom, normally you can pan and zoom with the middle mouse button. You can uh, press it, hold it and just move around as everywhere uh, in Max. And you can uh, spin the wheel in order to zoom in and out. Unfortunately, uh, Helium doesn't allow us to show the depot with constant size yet. So zooming in and out actually changes the text size also in the depot. So I rarely actually zoom, but it's possible if you want to overlook uh, a huge flow with lots of nodes, it's a way to pull back and take a look at the whole thing as one. Um, as mentioned, we have in the navigator uh, the ability to perform the pan. By clicking on a node, you're going to center the flow exactly at that node. And right clicking allows you to reset the pan and zoom to the defaults. You can reset just the pan, the zoom, and you can do zoom selected and zoom extends. Zoom extends is trying to fit all the nodes that exist within the, the view and does some zooming and uh, zoom selected, I can select one or two nodes and say, okay, uh, I want you to go there, and those are the main ones that we're focusing on.